Good day to all. The topic for discussion today is pediatric epilepsy. Coming to the anti-epileptic drugs, already I, uh, I have shown there are two types of synapses, excitatory and inhibitory. In this excitatory, you can see sodium is going inside through the voltage dependent sodium channel. These are the drugs that inhibit sodium and these are known as sodium channel blockers. Although there are uh, six, seven drugs, the most important drugs that, that are included in this category are phenytoin, carbamazepine and oxycarbamazepine. They are usually most of the time called as sodium channel blockers. And uh, there's the last one that's lacosamide. It's a new generation anti-epileptic that also is a sodium channel blocker. But compared to the other sodium channel, the uh, previous old generation anti-epileptic drugs, lacosamide is different because the uh, phenytoin, carbamazepine or oxycarbamazepine, they inactivate the fast channels of the sodium channel. Whereas lacosamide, they inactivate the slow uh, channels of the sodium channel. Calcium, multiple again, multiple drugs can uh, in, uh, inhibit the voltage dependent calcium channel, but there is a particular calcium channel that uh, needs mention that is the alpha 2 delta subunit of the voltage gated calcium channel. Two drugs particularly affect uh, inhibit this channel this is gabapentin and its congene pregabalin. Now, sodium is uh, going inside leading to depolarization. This depolarization when it le uh, reaches the axon terminal, calcium is released and this calcium releases, uh, causes exocytosis of the vesicles. In this vesicles, uh, the uh, glutamate is stored and this glutamate is released into the synapse and from the synapse, glutamate binds to its uh, receptors, NMDA receptor and non-NMDA receptors like MPA and kinase. So, for this exocytosis, calcium is needed, already I told, which are the channels uh, involved in the calcium. And uh, now, this vesicles have a particular receptor known as SV2, synaptic vesicular protein. And levetiracetam has levetiracetam and its congener brevetiracetam both have inhibitory action on the SV2A, so that the release of this glutamate is prevented and there is less excitation. Now, once this uh, glutamate is released into the synapse, they bind to the uh, NMDA channel. So, there are drugs which can directly inhibit the NMDA receptor. One of them is felvamate. It is not available in the market currently due to its toxicity, the hepatotoxic and hematotoxicity of felvamate. Now, it is withdrawn from the market. Another drug that acts on NMDA receptor is ketamine, though it is not considered as, as a, an anti epileptic drug. Now, AMPA is the other receptor where gly, uh, glutamate atta attaches. Topiramate is one drug that prevents, um, uh, inhibits the AMPA transmission. Another new drug that inhibits AMPA uh, transmission is parampanel. It is easy to remember because AMPA is, in, is there in the, in the name itself. Now, there is another channel which is HCN. HCN is a unique channel because it can act as inhibitory as well as excitatory. Two drugs that particularly involves and inhibit, uh, modulates the HCN channels are one is lamotrigine and one is gabapentin. HCN channel is involved you will hear this name in the pathophysiology of the absent seizures but curiously lamotrigine although used in absent seizures gabapentin is actually contraindicated in absent seizures but the mechanism involves modulation of the hcn gabapentin another action i already had mentioned the alpha 2 delta subunit of the voltage gated calcium channel is inhibited the hearing the name gabapentin we may think that it is having an action on the GABA receptor, but it is not the gabapentin and pregabalin does not have any action on the GABA receptor. It will increase the GABA in the brain, but not through the GABA receptors. Next, we will see the central inhibitory synapse, excitatory synapse we already saw. In the inhibitory synapse, I already mentioned the neurotransmitter involved is GABA. The precursor for GABA is glutamate, the amino acid, through the enzyme glutamate and uh, glutamic anti uh, carboxylase. Glutamine is converted to GABA. GABA can be stored in the synaptic vesicles and then released into the synapse. But sometimes GABA can be uh, within the axonal terminal, it can be metabolized to the metabolites using by the uh, enzyme GABA transaminase. So that is where Vigar pattern acts. It inhibits irreversibly GABA transaminase so that the concentration of GABA is more in the axonal terminal and it is stored in the vesicle and released into the synapse. Another drug that acts here is tiagabin, which prevents the uptake of the GABA from the synapse so that there is excess synaptic concentration of GABA. At the GABA receptor level, the most important two classes of drugs that acts are one is benzodiazepine, one is barbiturate, phenobarbitone, benzodiazepine like midazolam, clobazam, clonazepam, lorazepam, etc. Both acts on the GABA receptor. 
Other drugs that can ha have action at GABA receptor are felbapate and topiramate, carmosepine and fintoin also. Uh, as a practicing pediatric neurologist, no OPD of mine passes without see seeing at least one child with a febrile seizure. So, it is very common. In fact, it is the most common type of seizure in children. So, there is a definition for febrile seizure. What is a febrile seizure? So, the febrile seizure is anything that happens between 6 and 60 months. So, this is not an absolute value. Some others mention 1 month to 6 years. Some mention 3 months to 6 years. So, basically, the peak is between 12 to 18 months and uh, with a temperature of more than 100.4. The crux of the definition is that not the result of CNS infection or a metabolic imbalance. So, when a child comes with seizure and there is fever, the first uh, the first priority should be to rule out a meningitis or meningoencephalitis. And there should not be any history of prior febrile seizures. So, the typical uh, incidence that is quoted everywhere is 2 to 5 percent. 2 to 5 percent of all typically developing children uh, may develop febrile seizure. That is uh, at least uh, that is simple febrile seizure. So, febrile seizure can be we can classify as simple or complex. Sometimes some others use the terminology atypical and typical. Simple febrile seizure means it is the first thing is it is generalized. Either it should be having a generalized tonic clonic or just a behavioral arrest, but there is no focality like a focal clonic or focal tonic manifestations are not there. That is the first thing. Second thing, maximum of 15 minutes. Again, some others mention 10 minutes also. Third is not recurrent within 24 hour period. So, these three constitute uh, what is called as a simple febrile seizure. If anything is not uh, um, maintained, then we call it a complex febrile seizure or a typical febrile seizure. Out of this, the most important one I told, it is it's a generalized seizure. If there is a focal seizure as associated with seizure, it is very unlikely that that is a typical uh, seizure. Most of the time, it may be developing into other types of epilepsy. After the first episode of febrile seizure, in 30 percent, it can recur and in 50 percent, after two episodes, it can recur. If it is uh, in children who are younger than uh, one year, the chance is 50 percent after the first febrile seizure. Pathophysiology is not clear, but there are some genes uh, associated with the febrile seizure. Most common is SCN1A, other genes like SCN1B, 9A and CPA6. And uh, there are some cytokines which are associated with febrile seizures. Pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory are there. Pro-inflammatory basically IL-1B, IL-6 and IL-8 and anti-inflammatory IL-R1A. So, this ratio, some others project that it can be used as, as a, a potential biomarker to check whether the children will be developing temporal lobe sclerosis later in the life. Another viral infection which is typically associated with febrile status epileptic is HHV-6B and HHV-7. Apart from this, there are some particular epilepsies which start as the initial presentation may be as a febrile seizure, um, like a simple febrile seizure or a complex febrile seizure which develop later into this kind of epilepsy. One is Jeff's plus or generalized epilepsy with febrile seizure plus, where I mentioned already uh, the time, uh, uh, the age gap, age group that is between 6 months to 6 years. In this case, in Jeff's plus, children who are more than 6 years also may be getting seizures with fever. Although uh, EEG, MRI, cognition, everything may be normal. They are termed as Jeff's Plus. Uh, another important syndrome is Dravet syndrome. Uh, everyone must have heard of Dra Dravet syndrome. The typical presentation of a Dravet syndrome is around uh, maybe uh, two months or up to six months. The child, typically after a fever episode, will be developing a seizure. Mostly, it's hemiclonic. Typical febrile seizure or the simple febrile seizure I told, it will be generalized. But in Dravet syndrome presentation, most, most of the time they present in, with the initial seizure with a focality that to prolong maybe up to 30 or 40 minutes and that is a typical presentation. And previously, people uh, used to get this seizure initiation after the first episode of uh, after the vaccination. So, people used to call this as vaccine associated encephalopathy. Later studies have shown that what was so called vaccine associated encephalopathy were in fact Dravet syndromes. And uh, these convulsions initially up to one year, this can recur again, this uh, atypical features may be there and this recurrence will be there with fever. But by after one year, this becomes, seizures become prominent without fever also and other types of seizures like myoclonic seizures may develop. That is why Dravet syndrome was previously known as SME or severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. The typical, uh, the most important mutation is SCN1A in 80%, but other genes are also involved like GFAR uh, G2, SCN1B and SCN2A. MTLE or Missile Temporal Lobe Sclerosis is one entity which is controversial actually. 
most of the investigators investigators suggest that children who are having a recurrent or prolonged febrile seizure may develop mesial temporal sclerosis later in their life fires is another entity which is called febrile infection related or refractory epilepsy again this starts with a, in a typical young child who was completely developmentally normal suddenly with fever the child starts throwing seizure and that will be treatment resistant we'll go to the investigations so when a child presents with a febrile seizure the most important consideration as i already told is to rule out a cns infection so in infants who are uh, less than 1 year or less than 18 months it's very difficult clinically to rule out uh, meningitis in infants everyone must be knowing because the typical signs like kernick sign brudinsky sign etc are not demonstrable in infants young infants the only sign they may be having will be retrocolis where the child will be uh, extending the neck and will be excessively crying and will there will be uh, af bulging like subtle signs only so lumbar puncture when do you consider lumbar puncture, puncture in a child with uh, simple febrile seizure the indications are one is if younger than 6 months anyway definitely you will have to do in children who are 6 months to 12 months it's optional if the child is not vaccinated completely or immunization, immunization status is unknown cns suspicion uh, uh, infection suspicion if it is there definitely it should be done but mind you if there is any focal features like any hemiparesis is there with fever especially in a, a child who is prone for getting abscesses like congenital heart disease LP should not be done without ruling out a bacterial abscess in the CT because if there is a focality like abscess in the CT and you are doing LP, there is a high chance of coni. Who have been pre-treated with antibiotics? Doing LP is optional. The next uh, consideration is whether an imaging, a CT or MRI should be done. If it's a typical um, uh, simple febrile seizure, a CT or MRI is not needed. For that matter, EG is also not needed if it is a simple febrile seizure. But there is a study which was called a Febstat study. In Febstat study, they uh, found that focal EEG is lowing after uh, a febrile status epileptics may predict the development of temporal lobe sclerosis later.